Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Grixis Midrange. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys had a fantastic week. We are wrapping it up this week with a Grixis midrange deck brought to you by Hello Good Game. Hello Good Game, thank you so much for putting this list together. I'll be honest, I really just want to uh, try and see if we can get this guy to work. Um, I have not yet had a successful run with Sol Kanar, uh, the Tainted, and I'm just excited to give it a shot. I haven't actually played this deck at all yet. This is going to be a completely dry run. We're just going in blind. Uh, but the deck itself looks very, very resilient, as you can tell. We've got quite a lot of interaction. Uh, we've got March, we've got Flame Bless Bolt, we've got that Fading Hope. Infernal Grasp is in here. We also have to Make Disappear. Uh, for those Go Wide decks, we do have Malicious Malfunction, which I think is a really good call. Uh, not only because it does deal with quite a number of things, especially if you're up against like a Selesnya Enchantment style list or something along those lines, but uh, it also exiles stuff, which against things like Kami of Transience is a really, really important factor that you do need to consider. Uh, another thing, we also have Maestro's Charm, of course, uh, and then sitting at that top end, we've got the Regent, we've got Sulkanar, and then of course uh, the, the Resurrected here uh, as a three of. We do have Corpse Appraiser as well, so this is going to potentially exile a creature from a graveyard, and if you do look at the top three cards of your deck, you can put one of those cards into your hand, the rest into your graveyard, so kind of helps us cycle through. Uh, we do have an Obnixilis package here, just as a two of, but Obnixilis is obviously one of the, in my opinion, better Planeswalkers in Standard right now, and I think just does a lot for the deck, so we're going to kind of hopefully see what we can do there, and then of course Blood Tithe Harvester, dropping some of those early blood tokens represents a little removal as well, uh, and in general it's just a really nice little two drop. So. Uh, very interesting deck. I'm very excited to try this out. And again, thank you so much to Hello Good Game. Uh, you may notice as well, we have a different background here. Uh, I moved around my desk setup a little bit here. Um, my goal is to try and put some stuff on the wall behind us and that kind of stuff. Hopefully make this a little bit more of a true setup space because uh, unfortunately, the, looking at the door for the last uh, couple months has not exactly been ideal. So hopefully we'll see that change over the next few few days, few weeks, whatever. But regardless, let's go ahead and jump right in, guys. Hopefully have some fun. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. We'll see how this one goes. Uh, I'm okay to keep this. I don't have, well, I do have blue mana, excuse me. Uh, we have the, the Trilands, which is always nice. Uh, we have the blue, we've got the double black. Uh, we've kind of got everything we need here, so I think this will be okay. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be slightly aggressive here, given that this is a Delver. Uh, and just get it off the field. The reason being, uh, we know that this is probably going to be the mono blue like combat research deck, uh, and they're just going to want to play threats and then protect those threats, and I'm not super into them having that. So uh, I think the best option is just to go ahead and get that off the field as quickly as we can. Uh, here, I will go ahead and shoot this for two because we can gain a couple points of life. It just keeps, again, stuff off of the board, which is important. You may be wondering, okay, well, we have Malicious Malfunction. Is it worth it to, to wait on that? It might be, uh, but the reality is I don't really want to risk that. Um, hmm, that's fine. We'll probably end up playing this to uh, counter something. Maybe not. Maybe they're still searching for a threat, in which case that's great. Uh, but at the very least, at the end of their turn, we may end up playing this. We'll see. Um, do we go for it? I think not, actually. Honestly, I think we are better off um, just kind of going for, for the big play. I'm assuming they have a counter. Just going to go ahead and say. Uh, Otherworldly Gaze. Okay, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, no counter. Do they have a bounce? Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, we're tying up a lot of their cards here, which is kind of the important piece to this puzzle. We're just trying to make it difficult for them in the long term. Um, I think we just go for it again, and if they counter it, they counter it. Uh, we've got the Moonvale Regent at this point, too, so like we've got other outs. Um, 
And so that's definitely probably the biggest threat, I would imagine. But Moonvale region is quite good. Nice. Okay. Uh, the nice thing about the Resurrected here is we can just drop this to straight kill it, uh, which I think we will just go ahead and do. Hopefully they don't have a one mana counter. I don't know what they could have. Um, they do have otherworldly gaze. Well, I guess they could have a one mana counter from the perspective of uh, this cheapens up all their stuff. But uh, at the very least, we are going to hopefully get rid of this. No, they're going to phase it out. Um, okay. Yeah, sure. That's fine. We do have outs to kill this, so I'm not overly concerned, but uh, I don't love it either. You know what I mean? Um, sure. Okay. Uh, they're also leaving quite a bit of mana open. So they have otherworldly gaze definitely available. All right, well, first things first, let's try and bait something out. We'll, we'll obviously attack here because we can't do much else. Um, so now the question becomes, do we try and drop a Moonvale Regent? Uh, which I think is probably the play. Yeah, so I think we do this, hoping that this lands. Sure. As long as they don't draw like a counter, we should be okay. So we can drop this, I believe shoot this for three and then flame bless bolt to actually exile it as well, which would be great. Wow, they put a Talarian Horror on me. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, okay, so if this dies, we can potentially get him. We'll see. Uh, but this does open up, I think, the most opportunity to, to kind of finish this off. Uh, two of these is a little bit trickier. Um, I will do this. We'll just get this one off the field. Perfect. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, we got the last card out of hand. That was really, really good. Okay. Um, hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bait a little bit here. This is probably the safer play to attack in first uh, because if they block, we can just malicious malfunction. All right. Let's see what we want to do. Um, I think we just draw a card. And there we go. We got the answer. Easy enough. Sure. That's a lot of damage. Don't get me wrong. But uh, we should be okay here. All right. Let's attack in. Excellent. Um, I will just go for this. Given they only have one card in hand, I'm not overly concerned. Uh, we'll drop that and we'll drop this. Yeah, we'll get that out of there. Um, I actually think it's fading hope. As unexciting as this is, uh, our goal is just to keep stuff off of their field. <laughs> so, like, I think that's weirdly the safest bet. We deal two damage, gain two, and there we go, guys. We got the win. That was beautiful, actually. We got to see it work, so that was really great. Hello, good game. I'm glad we were able to get a win. Let's, uh, let's move on to game two. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. This is a little bit sketchy. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm going to mulligan this. Not great, but I will take it. And I think we just put the appraiser back here. Um, guys, as we're jumping into game two here, I do want to uh, kind of discuss with you guys and, and get your opinions, truthfully, on the Brothers War. We did obviously have some big announcements yesterday uh, that I think were really interesting and that I'm curious what your thoughts are. Um, we got some some preview cards as well, which I thought were really interesting. Obviously, uh, if you don't know, the Brothers War is coming out. I don't know why you wouldn't know. We've got a giveaway going on for it, so you should know. Um, <laughs> we've got a um, we've got the Brothers War coming out mid November, and uh, it's a really interesting set. There's a lot of artifact sub theme, a lot of uh, really historic pieces in the in the set. 
um, and some just really interesting stuff. So I, I'm just curious what you guys thought of the uh, preview. I heard a lot, or, or I saw a lot, I should say, of negative comments in the uh, the chat. And like, I get it, guys. You know, it's not always going to be what you hope it should be and all that stuff. But at the same time, like, I thought the preview wasn't that bad. <laughs> like, it seemed like a lot of people were kind of giving it crap and stuff, saying it looked like it was from like 2010 or something like that. And I'm like, I don't know that I agree 100%. Like, I thought they did a perfectly fine job. Um, the only thing that I really noticed was, uh, was it Lady Danger was the... Is that her name? I don't even know, to be honest. But her um, her reading was actually really good, but there were a couple of times where I was like, oh, she's definitely like <laughs> looking at a teleprompter kind of deal. But, you know, it happens. It's not a big deal. Um, all right, let's attack in. So the question becomes, do we want to sack the uh, Blood Tithe Harvester? And I actually think we do. Yeah, let's casualty. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really stoked about the, the cards we get to see. And I actually think this is kind of, this is sick in my opinion. We get to see, um, a lot of the like early days of both Mishra and Urza, uh, which I think is a really awesome little additive piece. Like you get, there's an uncommon version, which is them, uh, as they were kind of digging through all the, uh, the desert and all that stuff to find the Thran. And then, of course, you've got, like, midlife crisis, uh, <laughs> literally, um, kind of midlife era uh, Mishra and Urza, which is, like, when they were kind of at their respective ends of the war. And then you've obviously got, like, the ending of uh, where they meld and one's a Phyrexian and one is a Planeswalker. So it's just kind of cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm really stoked about it. Um, I think it'll be a really fun set, honestly. Uh, and I do like the the show. If I say showcase, the um, <clears throat> they've got obviously some different versions of cards and things like that. And I actually really like them. Um, we're not going to block. This has trample. There's literally no reason to block. Uh, Fading hope would be sick. Just bounce bounce that out of there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty stoked. I think it'll be awesome. Uh, I, I think it'll be a really interesting set. I'm excited to see where it goes. Land is not bad. Okay. Um, let's first do this. Part of me just wants to malicious affliction. Malfunction, not affliction. I'm mixing that up with another card. Um, hmm. I don't feel super safe about doing this is the only trick. Uh, I think we wait. So we've got the Maestro's Charm. I don't think we attack. I'd like to protect the Obnixilis as best we can, but I'd also like to hopefully get at least one of these two reflections picked out uh, with the Malicious Malfunction as well. Since we knew it was coming, I feel like that's reasonable enough. Okay. Uh, probably should have done this pre, but that's fine. Uh, I actually think I just let the one in. I, I don't want to lose the life gain if I don't have to. Uh, oh. Well, this changes things, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Okay, well, I'm kind of glad we burnt that out now. Cool. Okay, well, now we are forced into blocking, um, which is kind of fine because this still becomes kind of a nice little uh, one for one here and then potentially killing off this little sapling token as well, uh, which I will just kill the, the token, I think. Uh, I don't think there's a huge reason not to. It would also bait out another spell like this uh, guy's might, which I don't really think is that great of a, an inclusion here, but that's fine. Okay, uh, well, we know we're going to do this, so let's make sure we do that. Um, and the question becomes, do we... I think we just Moonveil Regent, actually. Not 100% sure, 
this clearly is a deck that's looking to like pump up some random stuff, which is like kind of fine. But again, until they have both of these flipped, I kind of want to uh, wait on the malicious malfunction. If they attack in, I'm going to be very interested. Really? I mean, we block. If they've got a spell, they've got a spell, but I need them to use it before we can malfunction anyway. So like, this is fine. Yeah, okay, cool. That isn't actually all that great because we actually just trade with this. <laughs> like naturally trade. This is kind of an odd play. Uh, and we get to kill this one, so now we don't even need the malfunction. Again, this also, if if they do have a spell to save it, yeah, they're gonna use it, which is great uh, because now they've got one less spell. <laughs> cool. And now we've got two malfunctions. I am just gonna plus up here. I'm not gonna overthink that. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. And yep, good to go. Um, yeah, I think we just wait. I'm not gonna pull the trigger on the blood token quite yet. <clears throat> uh, I don't think we're in a rush. Ooh, and that makes it less of a rush. All right, sick. Definitely just gonna drop this. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm just gonna keep plussing, I think, here. Uh, we're at a safe life total, so like the life gain is, I think at this point, a little less necessary. Uh, given the swing in life totals, they're at 9, we're at 24. Like, we just keep pinging away at them, and I, I think we'll be okay. Nice. Very cool card. This is kind of an odd domain style deck. I don't know that it's actually that good. Um, not to sound rude or anything, I don't mean it that way. I just, I, I'm not 100% positive. Um, uh, let's, let's crack a blood token first. Let's just, let's just see. Uh, I am going to keep the malfunction. You never know, you know? Oh, fantastic. All right, well, I guess before we do anything, let's, uh, wait a second. <laughs> we could just kill him, right? Let's, uh, let's attack first. Let's see what happens. All right, so that's four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, right? Do we do we just do it? Unless they discard a card here, that would be different. Okay, they didn't. Fantastic. Now we just win. Um, yeah, I'll take that action. Draw three cards. That seems pretty good. And look, we got another malfunction. <laughs> All right, cool. Good. We didn't miss lethal. I was a little worried we were going to. <laughs> that was awesome. That was a really good game too. Let's go ahead and move into game number three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll keep this. It's a little slow, but I'm kind of just banking on the flame bless bolt to kind of keep us in it. Depends what, what style deck we're obviously up against here. Uh, that's actually quite nice. It just gives us another out to uh, potentially kill something. Is it, huh? Um, in that case, I'm just gonna pass. Corpse Appraiser, not at its best, unless you've got a creature in the graveyard, obviously. So, like, I'm not overly concerned by, uh, trying to throw that out now. Again, we're not in a huge rush. I still think we pass. I might be wrong. Um, it might be better to... Ooh, do we just make disappear this? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. This is kind of an odd one to make disappear, but three cards is a lot of cards, so I'd rather shut that down. Um, that might have been a bit aggressive, but it's fun, so. Uh, we think they have a counter, right? Nah, whatever. We're going to go for it. If they have it, they have it. Got to make them use it. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, that just meant that they didn't have three mana for another Thirst for Discovery, which is helpful. Um, do we shoot for Obnixilis or do we just wait? I think we just wait. Our deck is pretty good about playing at instant speed. We could have Corpse Appraisered, I guess, but like we didn't really need to. Uh, let's give him something to counter. Let's see if they actually counter. They've got all the mana in the world. Um,. <laughs> Weirdly, I think it's probably just correct to pick a land here. 
uh, as much as that's not very exciting. <laughs> and we draw land. All right, well, we need to get around make disappear is the reality of it, so I think that was okay. All right, let's do this and assume they're gonna counter again, which is fine. Rather than counter this, then Obnix list. So this is a bit more of a test than a uh, commitment. Cool. Oh, they actually do have a spell. Look at that. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, not overly concerned by it, but that's cool. Uh, yeah, let's do this because uh, we can still then potentially play the uh, Flood Tithe Harvester if we need to. Cool. All right. It just kind of gives us a little more to play with, and we're kind of doing an okay job, at least, of running them out of cards here. So the hope is that we can continue that process. Sure. That's fine. Um, do we just go for it? They didn't have a counter last turn that was good enough, so I'm gonna try it. If they have a counter, they have a counter. But like, yeah, Essence Scatter. Yeah, it's fine. Again, really not overly concerned by that. <laughs> like, if they have a counters, that just means they don't have threats, if that makes sense. So like, at some point, you have to assume they're gonna need something a little better than that. Um, I'm gonna try for Obnixilis here. We need to get some pressure on the field at some point, so like, this is just, I think, the best option. Do we minus two? No, I think we don't. Um, we know they have Strangle in the deck, and uh, it's a sorcery, so getting getting Obnixilis up to four is pretty important here. Uh, yeah. I'm actually going to go ahead and crack a Blood Token here, too. Discard one of these. Knowing that we have another one in hand makes that a little easier. Excellence. I'm just gonna keep plussing. This gives them a much more difficult thing to deal with uh, <clears throat> by plussing here. So I think that's just better. What is this fun little thing? Uh, that's fine. <laughs> it's a token. If they have a counter, it's fine. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. Um, oh wow, they just gave up. <laughs> that was really good. Um, awesome. That was three undefeated games. That was pretty good. Uh, do we want to go for one more? Let's go for one more. We got some time. All right, guys, here we are for game number four. We get a bonus game today. Normally I only go three and truthfully we're on time to like cut it, but you know, feeling good today we're gonna try it uh yeah and this is a pretty reasonable keep we've got a nice two if it dies we've got three um if it doesn't die we've got obnixilis so feeling pretty good about this one we'll see if it actually pans out <laughs> very often i think i say things like that and then it just doesn't happen but at the very least we do have a reasonable enough curve to to try for it double soul, soul canar uh isn't necessarily great but that's fine Kill it. Yep, there it is. That's fine. We, like I said, have a have a plan for that, which is kind of nice. Having both Corpse Appraiser and Obnixilis is actually kind of a flex, because, like, you really just kind of get to do whatever you need to do. <laughs> um, hmm. I actually am not sure what the right answer is. I feel like it might be Make Disappear. It's either that or the Moonbale region. I don't think it's Flame Bless Bolt. Uh, let's take Moonbale. Let's go. Let's go big. We have the land here, and uh, they clearly have removal, but at the very least, it's going to be a little bit tricky for them to get through all of it. So, uh, worth considering. We can just bounce this token with uh, Ottawara. I don't think we do. I think we just play the region. Not gonna, not gonna overthink it. Um, if they have a removal spell, they have a removal spell, but we actually just then get to uh, to kill it anyway. So this is, I think, the safest play. I also want to keep the land around for the Sulkinar. You know what I mean? Okay. Not overly concerned about that. I'm gonna definitely kill the little guy. 
All right, excellent. Let's do this. Uh, let's make sure. Yep, let's attack in. They have no mana. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, I just will draw a card, actually. Let's go for max uh, answers here, given that they're also a fairly answer-heavy deck, clearly. Uh, oh, they have Titan in their graveyard. That's a little spooky. That is much less spooky. <laughs> okay, cool. Double Harvester, very nice. You know it'd be good. Wow! Wow! That was amazing. Uh, I did not expect that. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty sick. Let's just uh, <laughs> little bit of an overkill, but uh, I mean, come on, that's pretty fun. Uh, let's play a. Oops. Let's play our Harvester. That was really sick. I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just drain two. And uh, I mean, they kind of need to have something big here. Uh, if they do play Titan, it's fine because we have the uh, this little guy. Urtai? Urtai? Am I saying that correctly? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, we still are, I think, pretty much, pretty much good. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Boop. Really should have put a shield counter on that. That would have been much better. Um, let's see. Uh, we can attack with all of them. Which means no matter what, we'll be able to kill this little guy. Yeah, I'll go for it. They can trade off one of these. I don't particularly care. Wow, they're not going to. They're just gonna... Okay, I was gonna say. It's a little a little much, but that's cool. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we're just gonna straight up kill that. All right. Um, yeah. So... What's the worst case scenario at this point? They resurrect the Titan again. That would kind of suck. Still don't think that's enough because we just have the win with my stress charm. We don't actually have to attack anymore. Assuming they don't gain life, that would be important to note because they can gain life with the Titan. Uh, but hopefully they learn their lesson and they feel the need to shield counter up and we just pivot into <laughs> direct damage. I don't know, guys. I'm feeling pretty good today. I feel like we're doing okay. I like it. Also, guys, I just want to remind you, we do have our giveaway going on right now for the Brothers War. I mentioned the uh, the previews and all that stuff, but I did not mention our giveaway. We do have one going on. We're giving away a free box. Uh, if you're interested, there's a lot of ways you can enter. I encourage you to check out the video on our landing page here on YouTube. We do also have an article over on our website. It resolves Uh, if you go there, there's a lot of other stuff there. That's kind of like our video hub. It also has a nice little store. You can get some merch if you would be interested. It all goes to support the channel. And of course we really appreciate it. Um, and we of course have the uh, giveaway entry options and all that kind of stuff there. So please do feel free. We'd really appreciate it. Um, we, uh, we really like to give back as best we can in the community. Uh, and that's certainly our small way of doing so, just given we don't have a ton of funds. Uh, and so it's a really good way of uh, hopefully making sure we can. Um, cool. That's fine. Excellent. Okay, so they did see the... Uh, <laughs> oh. All right, so we just win, right? We're going to bounce that. Bye. We're gonna do this. We're just gonna get just just get that out of there. <laughs> Alright, so they've got one mana available. I don't know what it could be. I really doubt anything. Yeah, they're just gonna. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that's cool. And there we go, guys. We got the win. That is four undefeated games. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys, so that was an undefeated run with this Grixis mid-range list. We finally got Solkanar to work. I am beyond ecstatic by that because truthfully, I've played a handful of decks, some of which you have seen, some of which you haven't, uh, that have run him, but I haven't really been able to get him to work. 
we really got him to work in these games. And so I'm really excited to say that that worked out beautifully. Uh, hello, good game. As always, my friend, thank you so much for building and sharing your deck list over on Aetherhub. I really do appreciate it. Uh, this was a blast. I highly recommend trying this deck out. It is very um, controlly in a lot of ways, but it feels very pressuring uh, as well, as in a lot of the, the controlled elements, as in Sulkinar, the Resurrected, things like that, are very, they're controlling elements for sure, but they also feature a little bit more pressure. Uh, and so it's it's a little more like hands-on than like an Azorius control deck where you're just kind of countering, sweeping, and then you play the big threat. This, you kind of get to do things all at once, which I really like, uh, and it worked out great. So guys, highly recommend. Hello Good Game did an amazing job with this deck, and we did get an undefeated four games with it. That was beautiful. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I know when I mark this as undefeated, somebody is going to get pissed off about it. So thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Have fun. Get pissed off. Can't wait. I love you guys very much. Have a great weekend. I will see you guys tomorrow.